Welcome to the big match revisited, a chance to look back at the way football was televised more than four decades ago. This edition was shown in January 1975 when Harold Wilson was Prime Minister and the British transfer record was just £350,000. Settle down for some football nostalgia with host Brian Moore. Uh, welcome again to the big match. Today, three more games from the First Division. Our main match is Queen's Park Rangers against Burnley. A skillful and entertaining game for you. We're going to support that with the All Midlands clash between Coventry and Wolves. And the match that was right at the top yesterday, between the top two, in fact, Ipswich and Middlesbrough. Our studio guest today, Jerry Francis of England, the skipper of Queen's Park Rangers. And we're going to be looking up an old Arsenal star in our Where Are They Now series and a look at the letters that you've been sending us as well. But first of all, let's get straight on to the action at Loftus Road, the home of Queen's Park Rangers. The pitch looking in very good condition, the sun shining down. And first of all, here are Burnley, the team that are swept out of the cup last week by Wimbledon. A team with a job to do now to repair that damage and sustain their bid for the First Division Championship honours. They are in fact only two points behind the leader, Zipswich. So now they come to London to face the fast-improving Queen's Park Rangers side. And first of all, let's catch up on the two teams for today's game. Queen's Park Rangers field the side that beat Southend in a cup replay in midweek. Two goals by the number 11, Don Givens. As for Burnley, they've had changes forced on them. Defenders Colin Waldron and Ian Brennan are out through suspension and injury, respectively. Colin Morris makes his first appearance in the league at number seven. But what about Rangers and particularly new signing Don Masson from Notts County? How is he settling in? We've played four league matches and two uh, cup games and uh, the league matches have settled in quite well and the results, I think the results have shown that we've settled in well as a team and uh, but I think obviously Stan's playing very well and Don Givens up the front, the defence are playing well and uh, I think it's a team effort at the moment. And for Burnley, what about that Wimbledon defeat? New skipper Doug Collins. Well, I would imagine uh, quite a bit of pressure but we're, tr we're trying to put the game behind us and uh, we're going to roll our sleeves up today and... Uh, try and put on a good performance. It's quite an honour to be skipper. It's the first time I've ever skippered Burnley. The uh, Queen's Park manager, Queen's Park Rangers manager, Dave Sexton, in the centre there, enjoying life again after those last unhappy months at Chelsea. The referee today, Dennis Turner from Cannock in Staffordshire, and the crowd now waiting for the start. So Burnley kick off, attacking the goal to our left with as their skipper Doug Collins has said a job to do after that defeat by Wimbledon and Fletcher going in straight away but McClintock getting it away. Burnley just two points off the lead although they're in seventh place and a foul by Clements giving them a free kick, the foul on Leighton James in the opening seconds of the first half. Keith Newton wearing number two but uh, quite obviously we're playing at uh, left back his former England position. Peter Noble over on the right, there's Newton then with the free kick, curling in, and in fact a good header up there by Hankin, there's James again, and that's going to be a corner. Burnley in fact to rather enjoy the London air, they've not lost on their last three visits to London, a 3-3 at Chelsea, a 1-0 win at Arsenal and a 3-2 win at Tottenham, Fletcher right there in the middle of the picture again, and now it's going to be a corner taken by Leighton James, Hit low this time, and Noble was right in there, and now Tox. <laughs> playing against his former club, and Collins trying to stop him, but he can't. Newton didn't judge his tackle well, and uh, Thomas fell down late. There was a free kick. And David Thomas against his uh, former team. October 72 for 165 a thousand pounds from Burnley Don Masson will take the free kick for Rangers Don Givens is poised on the far side and they all came running out the Burnley defenders and the referee giving the free kick Rangers couldn't get back quickly enough so here's new James It'll be quite an interesting struggle between Leighton James and Dave Clement because they're both pretty fleet of foot. Jerry Francis, Masson unaware that Hankin was behind him and here's Noble for Burnley. Ingham won't get to that one now. Thomas showing his paces on the far side. Slight suspicion there that he was having his shirt pulled by Ingham. 
played back for Gillard. Inside now for Jerry Francis for Queen's Park Rangers, a long raking shot. Oh, and my goodness, Stevenson was late going down for that. From Francis and Stevenson, the England under 23 goalkeeper, looked to be late going down for it, pushed it away for the corner right at the end, which Stan Bowles will take for QPR. And Rangers have got two, four, six, seven men up for this. Really putting pressure on this Burnley defence, it curls right in, and Stevenson again didn't know too much about it. Complaining that there was an assault on him. So it's Burnley's ball. Paul Fletcher underneath this one, nodding it down nicely there into space for James. Flintock and Francis between them trying to snuff him out. It'll be with Keith Newton. Shot for Peter Noble, and hit well! Curling all the way from Peter Noble. Causing uh, Phil Parks just one or two little flurries there until he gathered it safely. Bowles. Free kick now by Thompson. and giving his version, I think probably saying that it was uh, a bit of a dive by the Rangers player. I don't think it was, it was a quite legitimate uh, free kick, which Gillard has now taken for Queen's Park Rangers. Givens again has got up well, he could be such a danger as he was indeed to South End the other night when he scored both goals in that cup replay. McClintock, Bowles, got it down again for Jerry Francis, and hit superbly first time! What a goal that would have been, a beautiful nod down, and taken first time with great power by the Rangers skipper, Jerry Francis, but just too high. Hankin, nicely taken on his uh, chest, and a nice little pass there, sending Leighton James on his way with Collins outside him. Still with James, now the pass for Collins, and he's going to struggle to get to that one. I think he pulled out right at the last and gave Rangers possession. Clement now finding Masson, and now Thomas saying, I want the ball as well, but uh, Masson taking it up still. Now it's with Thomas. Played on for Bowles. Clement's aggression again winning him that ball. Masson hitting it first time. Oh, and a good one too. But Stevenson had to push away for the corner. Masson, number four, looking for his first goal since he arrived from Notts County. And for a moment, it looked as though he might have got it until Stevenson pushed it away. Corner then to QPR, which Masson will take. Webb right up there, hindering uh, Stevenson, right in front of him there. Oh, and that was nearly one for Givens. Bowles now. Knocked away by Newton. Bowles curling that one away for Masson. Looking good at the moment, Rangers. Played for Bowles again, but Burnley have got so many players back, ten in fact in all. Well, he was on his knees there, Fletcher, when he nodded that one away. And not too many people forward for them. Burnley's throw. Just over a quarter of an hour gone, no score. Noble, Ingham. Noble, forward for Morris. Really the first run that Morris has had at the ball, and he's played it on for Leighton James, this could be dangerous. Played inside again, and it nearly fell for Hankin. But now Thomas can take it up for Rangers. Inside for Masson. They really do spring men forward quickly, and here's Beck. Played for Bowles, played again almost for Beck, and what a way there, keeping his head, keeping his cool, and making the interception. But here's Masson. Ingham, plenty of class and skill out there so far this afternoon. Ingham now for Burnley. Now it's with Jerry Francis. Showed too much of that to Noble, who's a good, strong tackler. James keeping it in. Doing well, there's some good wing play here this afternoon. Now James for Burnley, there's the cross going in. Oh, and it could go dangerously there against Queen's Park Rangers, and they could still make a mess of it. Webb twice had a chance to get that away, and twice refused to take it. 
Now Newton. Now Collins. Here's Noble. Played wide for Morris. Chipped in again there. That time Clement got it away. But here's Morris again with Ingham supporting him. James. Ingham with the cross. And Hankins' header falling easily for Parks. Jimmy Adamson in the centre. On the left of the picture, Brian Miller. For so long, a great Burnley defender. Rodaway then, crossing it in. Will it come again for Hankin? Now will it come for Leighton James for Burnley? No, stopped by McClintock. And McClintock really sticking close to the Burnley player, but somehow he's got away. James now, and they've got a corner. Off Ian Gillard. Well, how on earth, Leighton James, and you can hear the applause around Loftus Road for that uh, superb piece of uh, trickery. Looked as though there was no way past McClintock. So Thompson up there again, there's the corner going in, and a good catch by Phil Parks. Setting Rangers in motion straight away, but before they can go too far, the whistle has gone for half-time. The man of the first half for me, where in which Rangers have had rather the better of the things, has clearly been Don Masson, their number four, from Notts County, really taking charge in the middle of the field, and still talking as they go off, giving advice and giving orders, with Frank McClintock, their number five, who's had another good game in defence. But a lot to come on the big match this afternoon still, but a half-time score at Loftus Road in this first division game that reads Queen's Park Rangers nil, Burnley nil, and we'll be back with the second half in just a couple of minutes. Well, welcome back then to Loftus Road, nil-nil here. Rangers, in fact, looking for a certain amount of revenge because when the two sides met at Turf Moor, Burnley thumped them 3 nothing. Mind you, Rangers have not lost since then. They've, uh, that's really where their good run started. There's Masson getting in, and Thompson only half getting it away. But now Burnley coming away. Since they lost at Burnley, Rangers have gone six without defeat. And, in fact, they've won their last four league games. But although they had the better of the first half, they still haven't been able to break this goalless scoreline. McClintock beaten in the air by Hankin. Francis back to Clement, and Noble jumping well to win it. Hankin again. Newton, James. Webb getting that one away, but only as far as Collins, thanks to playing his first league game, and uh, really I think it showed a little bit there. He was a little bit nervous and uh, snatched at his shot just a little too much. Ian Gillard. Yes, he just couldn't quite get high enough there, could... Uh, no, but there's a shot, and what a good save! Now, can Gibbons get another shot in? No, that one's flashed away as well, and Collins now can take it up to the other end. Tremendous piece of goalkeeping there by Alan Stevenson from Don Gibbons. And he couldn't quite get his second one in either. Good defence by Burnley. Now it's with Ingham. Morris. Oh, he beat to Gillard well. Time to get his cross in, and it's not a bad-looking cross to Paul Fletcher on the far side. Not it down for Ray Hankin, and McClintock stopped him too. Masson. There's Givens. Now, can he beat Rod away? Yes, he can, but he's brought down, and the crowd didn't like that at all. And Givens wasn't very pleased with it either. The referee going across, I think, to intercept Billy Rod away. Just a quiet, cautionary word with him. But he has looked such a good young defender. But that was clearly a free kick. And Rangers will take this free kick now with Don Masson. Played into Jerry Francis. Trying to get a one-two going, but it was so crowded. It was a very ambitious uh, hope, really. Hankin. McClintock. Gillard. Game really has picked up the pace of the first half now. Dave Thomas again. Gillard and Francis have gone out there. They've taken Burnley defenders with them, which is perhaps more important, but there's a good catch by Stevenson. That looked like a 
push in the back by Rodaway. And the referee decided to play the advantage. Now it's with Thomas for Rangers. And it's a good-looking cross, always tempting the goalkeeper. Beck with the shot, and Bowles missed the shot. Turned back for Francis, and he turns it over. All starting with that superb cross from Thomas. Always tempting Stevenson, and yet Stevenson could never quite reach it. They, Beck had a bash at it, Bowles couldn't quite, and finally Francis turned it wide. But no doubt that Dave Thomas was the man who set it all up. That's really got the crowd going. Back losing out to James. But winning it back and a free kick given to Burnley. Crowd not happy with that one. Keith Newton for Burnley, in for Leighton James. Newton. Oh, and it's a fall maybe for Hankin, a good piece of defence by Gillard. Little openings coming up at both ends, in all honesty, Rangers seem to be making the more of them, but... Uh, Burnley are always there with a chance, and now Morris taking it up for them, and there's the Rangers defender, I think it's Ian Gillard injured. James. Boston again! Oh yes, a tap in there for Hankin! And Ray Hankin, number eight, has put Burnley into the lead while the Rangers uh, defender Ian Gillard was down. It went across the goal line, past Phil Parks, and in the end was an easy tap in. Peace Park Rangers nil, Burnley one. There's the man who scored it, Ray Hankin. Now into double figures with ten goals this season. And there's the man who didn't see it, Ian Gillard. Well, it looks fairly serious, that. Rangers down then uh, to ten men and Don Shanks, the substitute, warming up. and Thompson away. Now it really is a match for Rangers to win. Beck, remembering they lost 3-0 up at Turf Moor. Beck to Masson, played on for John Beck again, and a good shot! Oh, and will it go? No! Gibbons almost had a tap in himself, crossed away across that goal again, and only for Leighton James to pull it away again for Burnley. Well, one tap-in was very nearly followed by another, as that was only half-stopped by uh, Stevenson, and it looked as though it must be a tap-in for a moment for Gibbons. Now it's Newton for Burnley. James. Oh, and Parks had to tip that one away too. Corner for Burnley. And Gillard looks as though he wants to come back on. So a corner to Burnley, which Leighton James will take. And that time it was headed off the line from Paul Fletcher. Linesman flagging on the far side for an offside decision. But well, they really did come quickly out of defence uh, on a couple of occasions there, Burnley once to snatch the lead, and then Paul Fletcher having his header nodded off the line. Gillard to Thomas. Trying to get past Billy Ingham. 
feeding Thomas a lot in this second half, Rangers. Beck trying to let one go on the loose, and it very nearly crept out of Stevenson's hands. From Beck. Leighton James coming out quickly. Oh, and he's got the better of Gillard, and Gillard almost rugby tackling him, and the uh, linesman deciding not to flag because the Burnley player had possession. Well, that's either a throw or a free kick. Linesman giving uh, Gillard a piece of his mind, and it looks like a free kick to Burnley. Which James or Collins will take. Doug Collins, in fact, the Burnley skipper, is going to take this one. And Hankin and Fletcher are waiting there for the header. Fletcher with the header, fisted over superbly by Parks. What a good jump by the young number nine from Burnley, Paul Fletcher. And equally a well-timed flick over by Phil Parks. So for once the player switched to the other end. Burnley with the corner. And it's with young Colin Morris. Doug Collins now. Burnley's throw. Noble. Givens nodding it on, back allowing it to run. And uh, Hankin getting back. The front men are getting back quickly for Burnley and making life very difficult indeed for Rangers as Newton turns it back to Stevenson. Played back for McClintock. Now for Clements again. Thompson flicking that one away from one number five to the other. McClintock. Trying it with Bowles now. Out of play, I think. Goal kick to Burnley. With two minutes now to go. time Stevenson threw the ball into the crowd and really uh, Keith Newton pulling him away from that situation the referee going down there as well I'm sure the crowd behind that goal are giving Stevenson some stick but there's it's absolutely pointless in wasting time to that degree in fact a policeman's gone in there to sort things out Stevenson. Just over a minute of injury time gone. Free kick taken quickly. Rangers know there's no time to be lost. And now they're looking for a long clearance from Phil Parks, and the referee's looking at his watch. Francis trying to duck in, now can Francis do it yet, yeah, down he goes, and flashed across the face of that goal though, wide by Thomas. Two possibilities there, it looked for a moment as though they might even get a penalty, then when it fell for Thomas they might get a goal. Neither thing happened, and it's still 1-0 to Burnley. Gillard's header. Thomas, Beck, Masson on for Beck again, and he couldn't get there because Noble was there. Nicely killed by McClintock, though, as the final whistle goes. And Burnley, the team beaten by Wimbledon in the Cup last week, have come to London in the First Division and uh, beaten Queen's Park Rangers by a goal to nil. Ray Hank in the number eight, the man who got the easiest of goals, that's uh, quite simple tap-in. Jimmy Adamson, the Burnley manager the year, who saw there for a moment, must be well pleased with the way his side withstood so much pressure without key defenders Colin Waldron and Ian Brennan. And so we come to a final scoreline at Loftus Road, disappointing for Rangers fans because they saw their team have more of the play. Rangers nil, Burnley one. But a very good game.
Amazing to think there was only one goal in it, though. And amazing to think that after throwing so much forward, Queen's Park Rangers had nothing to show for the afternoon. And I'm sure our guest today would agree with that. Jerry Francis of England, skipper of Queen's Park Rangers. Just wasn't your day, was it? That wasn't, Brian, no. no. And, and in fact, you couldn't do what Wimbledon did. No, but this is football, you know. This yeah. is the way things go at times, and I thought we were very unfortunate today. Where do you think things went wrong for you yesterday? Um, I, I always believed that football is a game uh, with a hell of a lot of luck in it. And uh, I just didn't feel that we had the breaks where it mattered. And Burnley did uh, through an unfortunate uh, incident, I felt. And uh, once you go one down, they close things up, which, which they tried to uh, towards the second half. It's very difficult then to break it down and, and to get the goal, which we didn't do. Sure. So the luck didn't go your way. But you had, in fact, Don Masson. I think a lot of big match viewers seeing Don Masson for the first time. Let's have a look at one or two of the things he did, and then you can tell us about him, uh, Jerry. Here he is in action now. He picks up, he's in the centre of the field. He does seem to like to give a few orders, doesn't he? Picking yes, so he now. picks it up now and he's, he's aware of things all the time. And he's looking up now and he's going to play this out to Dave Thomas. That's a beautiful ball, what, 35, yards? It's a very yards? good ball, yes, very good ball with both feet. It's a great ball to him. Switches the play very well. Seems yeah. to have a bit of Terry Venables about him. Very similar to Terry. Here, David plays the ball forward to him. He lets it run. He's looking up again. And he's aware that David Clements is on the right-hand side of your picture. But instead, he plays a short one in to Stan here now, who comes short to him and gets a return. Now, this is where he's aware of players all the time, because um, Leighton James is behind him here, but he knows he's coming and he lets it run and switches the play again to the left, which is, uh, which is a, a midfield player's uh, ability. In fact, in many ways, he's been a bit of a lucky omen for you because that's the first game, I think, since he joined you that, uh, that you've lost. Has he really made all that difference? I think he has, yeah. Um, we were the type of side which needed a general like Terry Venables who could uh, change the play, can hit these 30-yard balls, and, and um, I myself needed it, and Stan needed it, and Don needed it. And that was the type of team we were. And I don't think we ever found a replacement when Terry left and went to Crystal Palace. And I think that now we have found a replacement. I think we were back on the... Um, the road again to well, how we were before. Now you've mentioned it, the, the, the goal that Burnley scored with an element of controversy about it. Before we see it though, let's, let's just uh, talk about the fact that Ian Gillard was injured in the six yard area and you yeah. felt what, that the referee should have stopped play? Well I feel that referees have got to use, use their own discretion in these sort of um, incidents and that um, I know referees are very concerned about uh, players conning them. Um, I think injuries. the Football League are as well. I think and that's why at the, the start of the season well. they ask referees not to blow up straight away. But I feel that you won't find many uh, defenders um, conning referees in their own six-yard box, in their own penalty box, which is going to cause their own team, their own defenders, so, much, so many problems. You can't play offside, you've got to hang back. And I, I, there's no way that you will see any defenders conning referees in this sort of situation. And I feel that referees should uh, assess the situation and... Um, uh, yeah. Do accordingly. Let's have a look at that incident then. Uh, we can see, in fact, this is the moment here, Jerry, as you look at it, that uh, Ian Gillard gets injured. Yeah. Hankin that's is right. the man. I think making a genuine attempt for the ball, whether yeah. it was a late challenge or yeah. not. Yeah. Now what happens? Now it goes out here to Doug Collins, who then switches the play quickly out to Ingham. Number four. He then plays it wide again. Now they're stretching us very well, actually. And that's where Ian Gillard would be. Because we're a man down, that's where Ian Gillard would be. Now we're having to uh, compensate for that. And uh, he plays the ball behind us, where we're outnumbered. And Ian Gillard is still on the floor here in this situation and, and hampering players. Players go around him and that. And um, Leighton James gets the ball, goes to the line. I think he, he falls Phil Parts a bit here, thinking he was going to pull it back. I was going to say, is the big man at Goes fault inside there? him. Well, it's perhaps a bit difficult there. I mean, there are things happening. Mm. There was a player on the floor and it goes across and, and Hankin puts it in. You know. But it's the referee's discretion, and, uh, and referee Turner felt that the, uh, that the game should go on. I think the managers at a meeting earlier this month said that uh, they felt that uh, the game should be allowed to go for a minute to see whether or not a player was injured or not. There was 24 seconds, in fact, between Gillard being injured and the ball going into the back of the net. But obviously a lot can happen in 24 seconds, as they just show you. They can score a goal, you know. I, f I feel that... Um, I don't agree with what the managers were talking about about, about a minute. I feel that this is... Um People can be injured very um, badly and severely in a minute, and I think that uh, the quicker the treatment gets to people in certain times, uh, the better. Mm. Jerry, let's talk about you for a moment, because it's been a good season for you. You've had a couple of England caps as well. Uh, how have you reacted to that? Um, well, I think that's part of the profession, you know. It's um, professional footballer's uh, biggest goal to become uh, an England player. And uh, I think basically your bread and butter is with your club. And anything uh, on top of that is, uh, is all well and good, you know. 
What about this game coming up in Cyprus, though, in, in the next few weeks? That is going to be a problem for everybody, I think, isn't it? Well, having seen the pitch on, on the big match um, a while back, um, I wouldn't have um, believed that the game could have gone on, um, considering the chaos there, etc. Um, but obviously, Don Revy and the Football Association have been over to see the pitch and to see the facilities and the security, etc. And it seems to be going on. So um, we'll have to wait and see. And you want to be a part of it? Of course, yes. <laughs> Jerry Francis, thank you for yesterday and thank, thank you well. indeed for coming in today. Thanks thank very, much. very much. Well, our next match uh, was one of yesterday's big battles in the Midlands. It's Coventry City, who meet Arsenal in the Cup in a couple of weeks' time, of course, against Wolves. The commentator's Hugh Johns. It was a match chosen yesterday by ATV. And apologies to all those viewers watching in black and white. The light blue of Coventry and the old gold of Wolves look identical. Coventry, though, are attacking the goal to the right. Oh, and it's in for Alderson. It might still drop. So Coventry completely expose the Wolves. 13 minutes into this first half and it's an unlucky 13th minute for the Wolves as Willie Carr knocks in the goal against the club who were going to buy him. Alderson had the first poke at it, came up off Fox, high in the air, might have gone over the bar, but there was Carr waiting underneath and nodded into the empty net. Larry Lloyd, Craven. by Munro, but he's allowed to go. Bailey, Powell, Kinden. Should knock it in for Powell. Didn't quite come for the kid. So a corner, Wagstaff, the second corner. They're level in corners now. But Wolves behind on goals. Wagstaff. Kinden got a touch. Kinden stabbing the winner and cross the man that they're all hammering at. Larry Lloyd having a right go across as Kinden equalises. Well, there's a tragedy for Coventry. 24 minutes of the first half, first half gone. Kinden equalises. Rams bottom stun. Wagstaff corner floating over. Kinden got a touch. Cross had the ball. Thought that another Coventry man was coming to play it. Walked away and left it. Kinden stuck it in. Powell waxed off against uh, Oki. Powell couldn't get there. Hutchison then for Coventry. Oki. Steen going down the right touch line. Or cannoning off John McCall. Willie Carr will go over to take it. Wolves lead John Richards up in the centre circle, but to bring everybody else back into the box. Steen right smack in the middle of the goals. Carr's corner. Lloyd jumping. Kendon with him. Alderson. Craven stretched for Carr again. That's Lloyd, that's a goal, it's 2-1, and again, very much a set-piece move as it turns out, and they gather around Larry Lloyd, that's his third goal of the season, sorry, his, his sixth, sixth goal of the season, and Larry Lloyd's a happy fellow. jump in the second time. Lloyd powers it into the top right-hand corner. So, a 2-1 win for Coventry. And now it's time for your letters. I just wonder if this qualifies for the best all-round first-class sporting achievement in one day. John Aldred of 48 Molepit Lane, Molepit Lane, Coolston in Surrey, sent me this newspaper cutting from the 1920s showing Jack Durston, who played for Middlesex against Surrey at Lords until 5 o'clock, as you can see that caption, leaving Lords a little after 5, a cricketer, and then he made a hurried journey across to Brentford to keep goal for them against Millwall the same evening. And as the caption says, 
In goal for Brentford at 6.30, a footballer. Mr Aldred asked, incidentally, if Jack Durston, who made that amazing sporting double, is still alive. Wisdom records, alas, that he died in 1965. I can't think of a sporting double in different first-class sports on the same day to equal that one, and I wonder if you can. Fred Kenzie of 59 uh, Kingsway in Enfield noticed that the goalkeepers in the Millwall-Portsmouth match, match that we showed uh, recently made marks on their six-yard areas to help give them an idea exactly where they were standing in the heat of the action. There's the mark, as you can see, through the penalty area, through the six-yard line, uh, and it's at the other end as well. We can see the same markings, and surely, says Fred, this is against the laws. Well, although you can't find anything directly referring to it in the laws, I asked yesterday's referee at Queen's Park Rangers, Dennis Turner, about it. He tells me it was made illegal by a recommendation from the Football League to referees. Fred spotted it. The referee on that occasion didn't spot it. It is, in other words, out of order for goalkeepers to do it. Now it's time on the programme again for Where Are They Now? <laughs> And this week we're responding to letters from a lot of Arsenal fans who are wondering what happened to Derek Tapscott, Welsh international who made his name with Arsenal in the 1950s, his greatest moment for Wales coming in 1955 when Wales met England in Cardiff. Here he is today, an incredibly youthful looking 42. He lives on the outskirts of Cardiff with his wife and two daughters, now works as a representative for a sports good firm uh, covering Wales and the West Country, still plays charity football with the likes of John Charles, the Old Churches, Trevor Ford, that must be quite a combination. He's got a nine handicap at golf and still retains a fond affection for Arsenal, as indeed I'm sure they do for Tappy. Well, I hope you'll enjoy our next action. It's the day's most significant game when Ipswich, the first division leaders, met Middlesbrough, who were lying second. Anglia's cameras were at Portman Road for this battle of the top two. Jerry Harrison is the commentator. Ipswich are in the white shorts. BT beating Mills powerfully. BT again. Lambert coming behind them. Weimark and Madrum. Weimark nicely down to Johnson. Osborne's over the far side. If you can check one up. It's got to be a corner. <laughs> Johnson's causing him some problems in the air and on the ground. Tremendous acceleration. John Penalty up there on the goal line. Weimark coming towards the near post. wins it, Bohm clears it, but significantly Ipswich doing very well in the air. <laughs> Penalty's gone up there into space and he gets it, that's a bit of bravery from a 19-year-old centre-half finding his way in the first division, he's chased by Saudis, Penalty's going to have a go! Mark and Madron, Madron comfortably. Bill John, good ball to Burley, quickly inside the tournament, we've seen it. And a fine ball to Colin Bill John. Weimark here, beautiful move. Johnson. And down he goes. It's a free kick, but it was a superb move. It looked as if it had prized open this very hard Middlesbrough defence. But Johnson was just off balance. So perhaps two was Trevor one. And in the end. They feel pretty happy getting a free kick from that spot. Well, is that too near for a Bill John chip? He's got to get it over the wall, don't forget. And by no means is the goalkeeper going to be caught on the post as Parks was against Wolves. But it's Colin Bill John, the just to his left. Bill John chip. Oh! Well, really another one. Colin Bill John cannot believe it. The ace almost struck again. We've got six minutes left. He's looking tired, he missed both the cup games against uh, Wickham Wanderers and looking 
a little bit as if he'll be happy to hear the final whistle, but not when the score's 1-0. And now Osborne, Lambert can't turn. And now it's Veljohn, uh, Torbert. Veljohn on the left. What a bad ball, can Veljohn pull it back? He's got the speed. Good header! Oh, what a perfect move from Mick Lambert. And Platt did well to get it. Off the post. And as we saw against Spurs, it was denied by the ridge on the line. Hickton. Relief from the Ipswich players as they get that decision. As we come up to the 90-minute mark with Woods pushing it back to Talbot. We're into injury time of this very tight game, which so far is being led by Ipswich by one goal to nil. It's Johnson now with a chance to hold up cracks. Johnson with a man on his left. Johnson, yes! That's the way to finish it off. And finally, Jim Platt is beaten. And my word, he's taken some doing. And it took a real shot from David Johnson. Relief and jubilation. Johnson had a chance to go past Craig's. He just got a look at the goal. A powerful right foot drive. Jim Platt, no chance. 2 0. And a victory that kept Ipswich at the top of the first division. Uh, thanks to our guest today, Jerry Francis, skipper of Queen's Park Rangers, for coming in. Uh, don't forget, though, on the ball next Saturday lunchtime in World of Sport in the big match next Sunday afternoon at 2. We're going to leave you today, though, with something from each of our games. First of all, the man who came back after a long and worrying injury, Willie Carr of Coventry. Oh, and it's in for Alderson. It might still drop. It does. It's Willie Carr. The team that came back from cup tie shame and defeat against Wimbledon, that's Burnley. Burnley are always there with a chance. And now Morris taking it up for them. And there's the Rangers defender. I think it's Ian Gillard injured. James. Passed in again! Oh yes, a tap in there for Hankin! And the team that took one important step nearer that coveted First Division title, it's Ipswich. So